So welcome back again. In this video, we shall discuss algae, fungi, and try to cover protozoa. Let's begin with algae. By the way, I have given the text color here in the green because most of the algae are green in color. See, the algae are the simple and plant-like microorganisms. Why do we call them plant-like microorganisms? Because they are plant-like because they contain chlorophyll. And we know that uh, it's the chlorophyll that gives green color to the plant. Moreover, they also produce their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Therefore, we say that the algae are plant-like microorganisms. And the algae, most of the algae are aquatic. Aquatic meaning they live in water. They live in either fresh water or sea water, the oceans, and they also live in marshy land. Therefore, most of the algae are aquatic in nature. And uh, some of the algae are unicellular. Unicellular meaning they are made up of one cell. For example, we have two examples here, Chlamydomonas and then Diadems. But, however, many of the algae are multicellular. That means they are made up of many cells. Uh, we have some examples again here, Spirogyra oscillatoria BGA, that is blue-green algae, and then also the seaweeds. These are all multicellular algae. BGA, blue-green algae, are also called a cyanobacteria. And these cyanobacteria help in nitrogen fixation. They fix atmospheric nitrogen, and which is useful for used by the plants. We have some examples, uh, although they are the same, we could just copy them down. Chlamydomonas, Spirogyra, Oscillatoria, and Nostalk. Now, the image that you see here, if we take the Chlamydomonas and observe them through a less powerful microscope, we'll see the Chlamydomonas, clusters of Chlamydomonas like this. But if we take a single Chlamydomonas and observe it under a high power microscope, we'll see the structure like this. You see here, uh, the Chlamydomonas has a cup-shaped chloroplast and which contains a lot of chlorophyll inside. So this is our Chlamydomonas. It's easy to draw this diagram. A cup-shaped chloroplast and oval-shaped Chlamydomonas with two flagellum, one going in this on the right and the other on the left. And the, the, the clump-like thing that you see here is the spirogyra. Since it is multicellular, you often find them in fresh water. And if we take a small piece of this uh, spirogyra, we'll see this type of structure in the powerful microscope. You see from here to here is one cell and there are many so since it is a multicellular it has many cells and you see the chloroplast the spiral shaped chloroplast this is the chloroplast which contains a lot of chlorophyll and the third one is the oscillatoria oscillatoria you also find it in the fresh water in streams or in rivers now if you take a small piece of it and observe it under a high power microscope, we'll see this type of structure. See, this oscillatoria is made up of so many cells. This each one is a cell. And then inside the cell, you find so many chloroplasts. So this is about uh, the algae in brief. And it's important to remember the examples of some of the algae because they are often asked in the exams. For example, Chlamydomonas, Pyrogyra, and Oscillatoria. These three you can easily remember them. And also diagrams, you can easily draw them. These uh, three simple diagrams which I have given. Okay, students, now let us proceed to the fourth type of microorganisms, and that is fungi. Fungi or fungi, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Now, these fungi, they grow on the dead and decaying plants in animal remains. 
and therefore you often find them growing on the dead trunk tree trunks uh, since they loved dead and decaying uh, plant remains now these fungi have no chlorophyll no chlorophyll that means they cannot produce food by the process of photosynthesis uh, and these fungi are made up of fine threads fine threads called hyphae threads like structure they are called as hyphae uh, these hyphae is mostly found in multicellular fungi but not in unicellular fungi we have an example here yeast it's a unicellular fungi how it can cluster together uh, fungi we can put them in two groups uh, first group as saprophytes that means they love to grow on dead and decaying animal and plant remains because they feed on them saprophytes and the second uh, group is the parasites the parasites live on living things or living animals and it is these parasites they cause diseases and uh, some important diseases caused by the fungi are ringworm and athletes foods in human paddy blast weed blast and predator blast in plants important fungi name names of the important fungi to remember the first one is yeast yeast is very important to remember it the scientific name of the yeast is saccharomyces uh, this yeast is used for wine making and also bread making and there are three other examples all of them grow basically on bread and therefore we call them as bread molds we have rhizopus aspergillus and penicillium let's see some of the images of the fungi now this is the yeast this is the yeast that you buy from the market to bake bread now if you observe under a microscope the yeast would appear like this a round shape many many small structures may be attached to it because they are budding they, they reproduce by budding so this is our friend yeast which helps us in production of bread and also wine and the next one is the rhizopus rhizopus grows on the bread when you leave the bread stand alone for several days you find this kind of uh, things happening bread getting spoiled it's because of the fungi and if you take a small portion of it and observe under the microscope you will see this type of structure and it's easy to draw you can draw them in your copy so this is our friend rhizopus let's see the third one third one is aspergillus i have written here aspergillus aspergillus can grow not only on bread but also on plants like we have the aspergillus growing on the corn here and you can draw the structure easily i have given the simple structures here students so that you can draw them easily you have to draw only these structures and name them as i have given the names here and if you want to draw the structure of rhizopus the small portion of the the image is enough to draw okay now let's talk about penicillium penicillium also grows on bread greenish kind of color is there form now this is the structure of the penicillium if we take a small portion of it and then observe in the microscope you'll find this kind of structures they have branches and they develop round structures here what we call them spores they help in reproduction so this is our penicillium in your textbook uh, there is uh, other examples i given therefore i'd like to show you the images of them the first one is the puff balls which you often find in the rainy season puff balls uh, in the open field you often find them in the grasslands and the next one is the toadstool toadstool which we find in the forest or even in the open grasslands so they are quite common in rainy season this is good to remember these two names puff balls and toadstool okay dear students now in order to 
increase your interest more on fungi i have given a beautiful picture here of the fungus kingdom fungus kingdom and you see so many varieties of fungus this is these are all the fruiting bodies of fungus these structures that they come up like umbrella we call them as the fruiting bodies of the uh, fungi okay and so now let us proceed to talk about the protozoa yeah, this is our last type of uh, microorganisms that we are going to talk about in this video protozoa protozoa are single cell microorganisms and they are classified as animals since they are classified as animals and therefore i decided to talk it about protozoa at the end now uh, these protozoa are found in ponds lakes dirty waters rivers damp soils uh, marshy lands you can find them practically everywhere the, the shapes of protozoa vary in different protozoa so they they do not have this particular shape each protozoan will have a specific shape and many protozoa are parasites and the protozoa which are parasites they are the causative agents of the diseases parasites some important protozoa are let's remember them keep them in mind amoeba which you have heard about it several times from your schools amoeba ant amoeba paramecium plasmodium and euglena we shall see their images and drawings one by one and some of the important diseases caused by protozoa are malaria you know it is caused by plasmodium it's a protozoa a parasite dysentery is caused by ant amoeba it's also a parasite kalazar is caused by a parasite called lesmania the full name is lesmania donovani so students these are our beautiful images and pictures so that you can easily remember them first one is our paramecium it it has got a typical shape a, a shoe shape protozoa paramecium and you know amoeba you have been drawing from your middle school onwards you know it very well so this is our amoeba and here is our ant amoeba that causes dysentery and the mal malarial parasite i have shown two of them here plasmodium this is a plasmodium and the last one is the euglena it has got a flagella here euglena so students let's see the drawings how should we draw them easily and so that we don't waste much of our time in drawings paramecium if you just draw like this and giving here like structure that should be enough amoeba you know about it this is our simple structure ant amoeba you just draw like this that's enough in your copy and then euglena if you draw this simple structure that is enough so dear students we have finished all types of microorganisms in our discussions in our videos i hope you may have understood and if you want you'd like to make notes from this video you can always pause and make notes and these notes should be sufficient for your studies and not only for your studies but also for your exams so let's see what comes up in the next video it should be a surprising one so see you then keep safe and keep smiling